For millennia, the human race have gazed up into the night sky and wondered about the mysteries that reside there. Ever since the discovery of the planets and the way they orbit the sun, to help us understand and teach younger minds about the workings of the solar system, a planetarium is a great tool to have and also makes an interesting display piece. Join me in this video as I build and review the Kids Labs Planetarium Plastic Kit with the help of some smaller hands. Hello and welcome to Model Minutes. I know this is not the normal kind of product that I review on my channel, but this is so similar to a regular plastic kit that I couldn't resist and I thought it would be a bit of fun. The sturdy cardboard box features an attractive image of the finished product, along with other information and safety warnings. This product is recommended to those aged 8 years and older due to the presence of small parts. Adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Inside the box you get a bag of plastic components, metal rods, instructions, paints and a paintbrush. A small silver sachet contains some glow-in-the-dark paint. The first step my young assistant chose to complete was to paint the sun red. The paints are water-based and look very similar to acrylic, but I'm not entirely sure they are. Reasonably sensible colours are chosen for the subsequent planets, attempting to make them look as accurate as possible. The paints can be mixed in order to get various colours and different shades, so for those of you with more experience, you might be able to get some really realistic looking planets. The moulded parts do feature raised details to help represent clouds on the gas giants and craters on the smaller rocky worlds. Some of these details were picked out in different colours. At this stage I'm painting the continents on Earth in green, as my young assistant deemed it to be too difficult and didn't want to run the risk of ruining it. I think that it's okay to lend a hand when people need it, as it helps demonstrate new techniques and can give them the confidence to try after a bit more practice. The clouds on some of the gas giants were picked out in different shades of red and yellow, to try and give an impression of storms. I mixed various paints together to help achieve this. When the paints were dry, the components were cut from their sprues with a sharp knife, and each of the two halves of the respective planets pushed together. It's worth noting that the plastic disc that represents Saturn's rings must be sandwiched between the two halves at this stage. The display base was then assembled, correctly identifying each planet, an appropriately sized length of metal rod was then pushed into the small hole in each sphere. The arms for the planets were then added to the base, ensuring that they were in the correct order and the right way up. When this had been completed, the planets were added onto the arms using the metal rods. The final step was to add the glow in the dark paint. You can apply this however you want, but I found that it was not particularly effective. I added it to the sun and around the outlines of the details on the planets, but when dry and tested, it failed to glow sufficiently. Perhaps I needed to use an excessive amount of this paint or had to mix it more to get better results. Either way, it was at this stage the planetarium was complete, and I had a very happy young space enthusiast as a result. This product retails for about £15 in the UK, but I am aware that it can be found cheaper in various stores or from other manufacturers, but the quality might not be the same. It didn't take long to complete, with only a few hours being needed. I thought that it was a great introduction to the skills that a scale modeler would need and was an interesting subject. If I were to build this kit again, I think I'd choose a sci-fi theme and make the planets look as crazy as I could. Ultimately though, I found it to be a good bonding experience and perhaps even sparked the interest of scale modeling in a younger mind. As always, let me know what you think of my build, techniques and finished model in the comments below. I'm also keen to hear your suggestions as to other videos and models that you'd like to see me feature on my channel, so feel free to post that too. All that's left to say is thanks for watching this video and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. 
subscribe and click that notification button in order to see more content and help support the channel. And feel free to share this video with your family and friends. Don't forget that you can also connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you all again next time.